Shores. Hello, peeps. I hope we've all been having a good day today because today we have a good old fashioned look at Dark Shores. Even though it seems they want it called Dark Shores! Fucking caps. The game is looking to explore multi story platform on top of permadeath features, even though I think it should really be multi line stories through permadeath. But anyway, let's start off with some minor grapes, which I didn't see as a problem, but maybe a problem for some of you picky bastards. There's no rebinding of controls, but I felt that the keyboard layout was simple enough and stuck to what I would consider a standard WAS layout. And yes, FF's flashlight. Of course, if you're not using a QWERTY keyboard, not being able to rebind the controls may mean this game is a miss for you. The graphics are not AAA, but this is not a AAA game, stupid. And for me, the textures and sprites looked good enough when the graphics were turned up to the max and did not put much of a strain upon my computer. And at lower settings, I could see people having problems with this, but if you're running a rig that poor, then you get what you are given, really. The main issue of the graphics for me was the cluttered landscapes that made it uneasy to see slopes. And as there wasn't much difference between unpassable and passable slopes, this did cause some minor frustrations for me. Some of this did seem to be addressed with objects you need to find having a glow and a map that will show you when you're near items, and the developer does seem to have put some thought into this. But as I did seem to find myself flicking the map on and off too much, as it was the easiest way I found to forage, but as you collect more of the diary entries you can spot items from a greater distance. So a nice reward system there for you. The main gameplay stems around stranded survivors on an island who are being hunted by a mysterious figure called the Hunter. No, not that Hunter, there's no hoodies here. The Hunter appears randomly and if he catches you, that character is dead and you move on to the next character. So in simple, if you enjoyed the Slender Man style of games, even down to the collecting bits of paper, then this adds a good twist to that format by adding the challenge of keeping people alive. So if you like those games, this is well worth a try. If you didn't, then don't bother. Wow, that's the simplest review I've had to do in a while. Not not enough? Fuck them, that's all they need to hear. That's all that needs to be said. Okay, okay, I don't want to meet your mate Stanley. To explain the story on offer here without spoilers, it's corny. But from my experience of the horror film industry, that's not overly important, as immersion causing stress or scares in the player or the viewer are much more important. And as for jump scares, as the hunter appears randomly and with quite a screech if he sees you, I was jump scaring all over the place, but I am very easily startled. Until I found one fundamental flaw, which really did start to kick in. And I noticed that the background noises would stop a while, while the game was loading the hunter and his noises in. In the meantime, I stopped keeping an eye out for the hunter and just started to run every time silence hit. The game offered new tricks with the hunter placing traps you can run into, but this brings me to my fundamental problem with games of this type, and that is that if you see a trap, you're not able to disarm it while you're not in danger, and as they're just bear traps, a simple flick would make that happen, and it would make them useless. That feeling of being oh so powerless is the cornerstone of great horror games for a lot of people out there, but from my own personal opinion, in a game, I would want a few tricks in my arsenal, even if it's something as simple as being able to throw something to distract the hunter. Something where I can use brain logic rather than reactions to survive adds an extra layer of a game that makes it appealing to me, but I understand that I'm maybe slightly more in the minority there. One of the other features added is almost a survival style like from the crafting games with you having to not only collect food to keep people fed but a day night cycle you can control with a bed that is balanced against the hunter becoming more aggressive as each day passes. So giving you the choice to brave some night cycles or to waste that time and risk pushing the days up. So you're not just relying purely upon reactions. There is some decision making here upon your approach to the game which is nice. I would just like some decision making upon my approach to to the hunter rather than hide and run. The game is developed by a single developer and why I think it should be slightly cheaper that's a minor annoyance. I think the developer has done an amazing job here but the game is lacking the amount of effort that one person can put in and f I feel like the game like this could be taken up a notch if there were more people working on it by maybe having characteristics within the individuals you control to define them better and it would add depth to the game as well as the characters. 
and keep you having to add minor changes to your gameplay for each player that you're playing. So in summary, if you enjoyed Slenderman S games, then give it a go. It's a good addition to that genre. If not, the game doesn't add enough to call all gamers in and to call it a game for all, essentially. But anyway, that is Dark Shores. You go off and enjoy the world. World. <laughs>